let's get this peel going. That is funky. Absolutely. All right, here's a power on on this thing. Comes on, says OLED. My viewfinder showed some blooming, but there's no blooming on this TV. And I decided to connect this using the phone. It just, in my opinion, simplifies things. You will have to download the Smart Things application. Uh, to put yourself in a position with that. So it just it just uh, for me makes things much more easy uh, Even though the remote isn't too bad to navigate around. I think that you know, it's just easier obviously to type on a phone that you're more familiar with Okay, so I've got the TV set up um, at least past the remote stage and uh, one thing I want to report the left side is where um, I had the dent it appears to be speaker driver kind of in the middle area um and up top also and one thing i can confidently say is that there doesn't appear to be any damage mechanical damage at least from um the driver being destroyed all right i'm going to attempt to plug up a playstation 5 console right now i pulled my secondary console because um the one that i have that's going to sit in here i need to get cables managed and such for that so we're just going to go ahead and get it plugged into the back of the one connect box and after a couple of brief moments tells you you're connected um console is restarting right now you know how the playstation does when you don't turn it on properly but setup is pretty much the same thing for each of these you just kind of do that let it do its thing um, this is something that I will rerun just because I do actually have something dedicated for eARC again, a receiver, and then I'm going to have dedicated uh, ports for the other three HDMIs. I'm not going to be running anything to the coaxial uh, input of the TV, but yeah, I am absolutely connecting my TV to the internet. I've made a lot of jokes with people saying that I wouldn't do it, but you know, I really don't think it's that big of a deal. Plus, add to the fact this particular TV because it has a bend a dent I keep saying a bend forgive me a dent on it I am going to be getting it exchanged with a new fresh panel so we're going to continue to play around with this and enjoy it and mount it up and everything else but yeah I'm not really concerned about the whole internet thing right now and right here is telling me that I have the latest software so telling me an even better a version might be available there's no updates right now so past this I'm not really concerned about it um, I think this is something that you should be conscious of again just want to kind of give you a disclaimer uh, The s95b left a bad taste in a lot of people mouth me personally not so much uh, It was just more so the hype around The TV initially and then how it ended up turning out and then having to go in reverse pretty much But when you buy a brand new TV and it's like bleeding edge and the new of the new You know don't listen to these people connect your TV get it connected make sure it's running um, optimal because there may be some things that they want to push to you it's no different than you buying a video game and the game having a day one patch or something to that effect uh, beyond that obviously if you're gonna wait months to buy this TV you should I would like to think that you are watching some type of content creator or uh, looking for some news feed that might tell you that you know it might not be such a good idea but you guys can make your own executive decision I'm not really here to tell you what you need to do or what you ought to do with your TV uh, you know, I'm just telling you what I'm doing and so I'm sharing this as I always do All right, so there's an ad a feature on this TV called adaptive sound plus um, Adaptive pictures. It's pretty much the adaptive feature um, as you can see it takes your viewing experience to the next level um, This is something for people that don't like to go in and initially soft um, You know calibrate their settings and so forth um, I think the sound functionality is, is it sounds it looks like when I say sound it sounds like on paper to be a great um, addition to this television um, you know especially if it has the ability to pair it with some of their you know specific sound bars you know for me personally you know this is one of the things that I kind of got to throw Sony's name into the mix if they offered a positive negative for you to utilize the speakers on this panel as a center that would be phenomenal 
Uh, but fortunately for me, and if you've recently followed the channel, you know, I've upgraded my system from a Sony core audio system to some clips audio. Um, so, you know, this is definitely something if you know you want to get into trying, you can definitely do that. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to go ahead and test this thing out and get it set up. So that's been enabled. Now we're looking at the TV. Uh, what it did, it just it added a little bit of more of, of immersion to the audio, kind of kicked it up a little bit. Uh, what that what that functionality is supposed to do is optimize based on what you're watching. And as you can see, there was a notification that just popped up saying that. Now, this is Tizen. Tizen is kind of like the 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 one thing that a lot of people, you know, don't like so much about the Samsung TVs, uh, you know, put you in a position where you just kind of have to deal with this this, uh, you know, clunky OS. Um, just right there, I hit I hit left like six times and you can see a skip from Internet all the way to like YouTube. You know what I mean? It's just it's just little stuff like that with Tizen that will 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 make you upset. I don't know if it's got something to do with dedicated processing within the TV um, or that the OS just like kind of like hangs up on itself or what the issue is. Yo, this thing is amazing. Yo, this is yo, this hey. This, yeah, this shit. I got it recording, but man, yeah, this, this smut is, this shit. Yeah, man. Dang, that mud is, it sounds good too. Whew, okay. I'm liking what I'm seeing right here, man. My reds, my blacks, they look good. I had to get up on it, man. Dang, that mud is clean. Let's check it out on that viewfinder. Man, that listen, this is this is pure. This is like uh it doesn't look and I haven't touched anything now. I I still have to go in and, you know, do my own manual stuff, but it doesn't look um out of the box overly saturated right but it's really good it's a real nice kick especially when you get around this center in here there's those different separations of different like kind of reds going from his face to like around here with a shadow detail to right here over into this area too um you know the best i can do is just kind of articulate that we're going to use God of War just to deep dive into a little bit of gameplay. We're going to get into much more gameplay in the next upload that we're going to have, though, because we'll actually be connecting a gaming PC. I think it's cool that the TV automatically puts like input latency at the lowest. And this looks really good. This is PlayStation 5. Um, I can definitely see some pixelation, uh, but it's just because I'm accustomed to seeing this game on PC so much. But this is really, really nice now. They've got this feature, this Game Motion Plus. I'm not really sure exactly what this is gonna do for me, but I'm pretty confident it's gonna introduce some extra input latency to make things feel uh, more smooth. Um, in my opinion, I, I don't know how to play around with this. This is not something that I would be using though. Uh, I can tell you that now, but uh, I like the change, the extras that they've added to you know, the, the game optimization, it's a real good feature. Uh, glad that they implemented this into this game. Uh, still tells you what resolution you're running in, what your frame rate, uh, if you got HDR on, if the title that you're playing on console or PC is running in variable refresh rate. Um, so some great features there. And then when it goes down to your, your picture mode options, you've got a couple there. You got RPG, you got RTS, FPS, sports, you got original. Um, just kind of ties things in this original looks looks it looks deep <laughs> so yeah definitely not gonna have such pop to it but you know hey however you want to play it's really all your preference I'm gonna go ahead and change this back but yeah some great great options there just leave that on standard now I'll, I'll more fine-tune settings when I get on PC that's what I'll be looking to do. And just general movement isn't too bad. Again, this this isn't going to be the best title for me. This is just something quick. 
Uh, this PlayStation isn't even my own. This is my son's PlayStation, and so I'm surprised I even had this game loaded up on here. But because I'm so familiar with playing it, it's cool. But the bad side to that is I'm also still really familiar with playing it on PC. So there, there's just details that don't exist that I'm looking for in any event. Just moving around, navigating, getting that X to respond back to me and everything. Just feels really smooth. So we know that this TV's uh, slated to have some super low input latency. Uh, none of that's been tested yet and put out there. But hell, I have an input lag tester. I might might even put myself in a position to go ahead and do that. But I can tell you that the game definitely does feel playable. This one at least. All right, so to Samsung TV Plus, I think this is a great option, great feature. Uh, that puts you in a position where you know you can watch some content. I just got this up here because I don't know if I'm, you know, able to you know have this stuff showing or not. But um, obviously, you're gonna need to go through and and dial in your settings or whatnot. Uh, everything that I'm watching right here is just super extremely vivid. Uh, so just adding like a warm base onto there would would definitely uh, tighten things up. Uh, Tizen, I mean, I, I just spoke about this recently on the live and, and I did even earlier in this video, uh, navigating through some of the things to this point of the video. I've been playing around with this TV for about a good hour and a half, two hours, and it hasn't been the worst thing ever. It's just been, it, it, I don't know, it's just, it's just a, an overall general annoyance uh, to have to deal with Tizen. You know, I just wish I didn't, which you don't. Um, and I don't, and I probably won't. Um, in fact, I know I won't because most of my content is going to be, uh, streamed through another source, another external device. And that's really what I encourage for most people to, uh, settle with, settle for something that's going to give you more fluidity and, and more functionality. And you really only need to rely on this TV and its operating system just for you to have the settings just to be able to navigate and, and, and manage through your settings that you need. If you're interested in playing games, things like that, you know, invest into your console or again, I say a separate device, a Fire Stick, an Nvidia Shield, an Apple TV, a Roku stick, whatever, dare I say a Chromecast. Anything is going to put you in a position where you have more freedom and more uniformity in my opinion versus Tizen. Okay, and by default, the picture, at least for you know this app that I'm using, which again is the Samsung TV Plus, it's set on intelligence mode and it's set for optimized 16 by 9 aspect ratio of course going into expert settings is going to give you a ton of different who done it and different things that you can do i'm not sure why but out of the box this thing is going to be set with a, a, a peak brightness uh 50 to uh um you know at the max you know turning that down a little bit contrast turn that down a little bit however you want to do it you can uh, get into here and, and play around with your settings and give yourself a much more enjoyable experience. Um, in my opinion, it needs some type of um, you know warmth added to the picture. Peak brightness and everything is gonna be turned up on this thing out of the box though. So you might not have the most enjoyable experience watching live TV just because the things just, the, the colors just don't look right. But just turning down some of that brightness is gonna take some of that red out of red and green out of green and so forth um, but there's a lot of different things that you can play around with um, the TV's new obviously so you know I'm gonna take my time and fine-tune my own settings and figure out what's gonna be good for me and then there'll be a slew of other guys I'm sure at a professional scale of things putting settings out for you guys for you to be able to follow it's not really my cup of tea to make settings for other people but you know I find what's gonna be best for me and, and then I go from there but I just wanted to show you guys uh, you got a lot of options within the settings Sound settings, you got TV speakers, of course. Um, you know, there's your receiver optical. There's HDMI if you got one plugged in. You also have the Bluetooth speaker functionality. Um, I was asked how the how do the TV uh, speakers sound? Uh, something I'm gonna test a little bit more in my next video when I turn it on for like PC gaming and such. I'll be able to toggle and go back and forth from the speakers that are there because they're supposed to have some room correction type technology. Um, and then my surround sound, which nothing's going to beat that, not the TV. Um, but you also have some expert settings within audio, too. Um, so your ability to turn on HDMI, uh, HDMI eARC and all these other different settings, man. So some really great stuff. Um, I think ultimately it's a pretty good package out of the out of the box. You see, I got my name is S95 Cami. Yes, yes, yes. That's the name of my TV. Um, 
but you do have you still have like if you go to external device you still have your game mode and such there um you i mean you can go in and tune like whatever the input is and so forth um it's just a it's a great great tv man so far you know i have nothing no kind of complaints outside of the 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 bend in my panel not the bend i keep saying the bend i don't know why i keep saying the bend but i can't i can't blame this thing on bend but the dent in my panel um it seems to be the only issue I've had now. This TV is supposed to be 2,000 uh, nits brightness. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some stuff, 14, 1,500. I'm not really sure, guys. Listen, it's a hell of a lot brighter than uh, white OLED, if that's what you're coming from. Uh, me, particularly in the 77 space, the C1. Uh, to me, brightness is not going to be the do-all, be-all to this. This thing still has a radical uh, color space. And it seems like so far, the things that I've seen... I am impressed not only by the volume of picture quality, but by the enhancements that were there. Um, those of you that will remember the S95B from day one, I can tell you the TV looked more vivid than this one, but it didn't necessarily look brighter. Now, whatever experts or specialists are going to go out there and test the peak brightness, I'm not sure. In a real time scenario, this is definitely a much better TV. So although this is not a review, this is going to conclude my initial unboxing picture quality all of that stuff if you didn't see the first video that was based around more build quality of the tv and then i wanted to be able to chime in some more and hit you guys in the head with the continuation of that so i'm gonna catch you guys on the next video which is gonna be tomorrow we're immediately gonna go ahead and start shooting immediately after i end this i'm gonna start you know getting that set up we're gonna catch you then peace god bless and as always tell you guys max love